Hi, I'm Russell Cunningham and this is my presentation on the impact of binge drinking on exercise motivation in university students. Alcohol is fast becoming the most popular drug amongst teenagers throughout the world. With this in mind, it is apparent that alcohol overuse and abuse needs to be acknowledged as a serious risk as an unhealthy behaviour in young populations. Binge drinking is the act where one consumes alcohol with the intention of getting drunk. Binge drinking is responsible for more than half the 80,000 deaths annually in the United States. A national study in America also revealed that of those that reported, approximately 40% had engaged in an episode of binge drinking at least once in the two weeks prior to the survey. Studies have found that an increase in alcohol use can be associated with sedentary behaviour. This is described as a behaviour in where energy expenditure does not exceed 1 to 1.5 mets, which is associated with light physical activity. Findings also suggest that leisure time physical activity is highly associated with alcohol use among college students. With these increasing trends, research has been put into treating this issue. Due to its substance-free nature, exercise has been proposed as an intervention strategy to help reduce the dangerous drinking rates in college students. This is supported by a study called that called for an increase in the role of physical activity as an exercise treatment in alcohol use disorders at rehabilitation facilities. However, the ability to adhere to exercise in order to achieve this has shown to be poor. Therefore, it is apparent that the levels of motivation must be analysed in order to get a better understanding of how to overcome this problem. The abuse and dependence of alcohol is becoming frequently associated with mood disorders such as anxiety and depression, as well as other disorders such as anorexia and bulimia. Exercise is often put forward as a treatment to help combat these behaviours. However, it is necessary to know the most effective way to implement an exercise protocol. Studies have found that extrinsic motivation is necessary to initiate exercise while intrinsic motivation is required to maintain exercise. Building upon this, it was proposed that initiative is more likely to predict performance when individuals experience autonomous and not controlled motivation. Consequently, it can be said that due to alcohol's close relationship with appearance-driven and sedentary type behaviour disorders, it should be more synonymous with a controlled regulatory style of motivation. Therefore, the purpose of the study was to identify the impact that binge drinking had on exercise motivation. A between group sub design was used that investigated the motivations for exercise between those who drink to get drunk regularly and those who do not. The most efficient way to test this data was to split the sample into two groups respectively. This provided a representation of exercise motivation in both groups and gave us the most accurate results. The non drinking group acted as a control group and the drinking group was a condition group. This meant that any deviation from the results in the control group could be attributed to the condition. Participants of this study were students enrolled in Applied Sports Psychology at Central Queensland University. A group of 51 students were surveyed. Firstly, participants will be asked to take an online survey through CQU's Moodle course website. This was an effective tool for displaying the survey as all students had access to Moodle, whether on campus or at home. The survey opened with a series of demographic questions to establish more information on participants. This involved questions regarding individual characteristics such as height, weight, age, gender, relationship status, current location and income. It then went on to assess activity levels by asking participants whether they partook of any level of sport and of what kind, as well as inquiring as if they meet the current minimum guidelines for anaerobic, uh, anaerobic and resistance training levels. Finally, participants were asked to identify how often they drank with the intention of getting drunk, while selecting the answer that was most closely related to them on the scale provided. The next step in the survey consisted of the Treatment Self-Regulation Questionnaire, or GSRQ. While the questionnaire can be used for several behaviours, this study focused purely on exercise. And the TSRQ is a survey that analyses people's motivations towards unhealthy behaviours. The, TSRQ, oh, the questions are designed to assess people's degree of motivation towards these behaviours as either relatively autonomous or controlled. It assesses these through 15 questions. 
autonomous regulator, regulatory style and controlled regulatory style. Both have six questions each. And A motivation or no motivation has three. So I've measured using a Leichhardt scale from one to seven, where one means not true at all and seven means very true. Once participants have completed the survey, data was scored according to the TSRQ methods. Each section was averaged and the final overall representative score was given to show the dominant style of motivation trend. Data was collected and analyzed using the data analysis tool pack in Microsoft Office Excel. The sample was divided into two groups, a drinking and a non-drinking group. The drinking group consisted of those who drank alcohol to get drunk equal to or more frequently than one to three times per month. And the non-drinking group was considered consisted of those who drank less than one to three times per month. Independent t-tests are run to examine if there was a between groups difference with the significance at a point at p value of less than 0.05. The test revealed that there was no statistical difference between the types of motivation present with an increased alcohol use. With the drinking groups and non-drinking groups showing no significant difference in autonomous motivation scores, as you can see in the slide, and here in Figure One. Additionally, there was no significant difference in the controlled motivation scores, with the drinking group and non-drinking group scoring similarly, as seen here on the slide, and here in Figure Two. So as it can be seen in the results indicate that alcohol consumed doesn't have a significant impact on exercise motivation. One of the possible reasonings behind these results can be attributed to the restricted sample of participants available who undertook the survey. The vast majority of participants revealed that they either participate or have participated in some form of recreational sport or activity. They also shared that they meet the minimum criteria in at least one category of their anaerobic or resistance training levels. This suggests that their motivation for exercise could be due to their recreational activity background and have not been influenced by the amount of alcohol they consume. Data has been found that students that regularly engage in exercise are, way, are less likely to drink heavily. Therefore, due to the restricted population and their background in exercise, they may not, have, may not meet the minimum levels of heavy drinking required to show a significant difference to the control group. Furthermore, this could be the way that alcohol is normalized in modern society. As a result of this desensitization to alcohol, adolescents are shown to lack the motivation to regulate this addictive behavior, so they do not know or view it as unhealthy or problematic. Continuing on from this, even though through age, young adults become more aware of the risks to the health and safety that alcohol com consumption has, they maintain that the consequences of these actions are not serious and do not try to avoid them. This suggests that this behaviour may not be in, may not have an influence on their motivation style. College students are also far more likely to drink in a social con context rather than the sedentary nature. A study found that when college age students are affiliated with groups of peers that regularly consume alcohol, they show to have significantly higher rates of consumption. It is also possible that drinking level prevalent within our study population are not sufficient enough to quantify it being a sedentary habit and therefore cannot adequately, adequately be linked to the characteristics exhibited by those who possess the controlled regulatory style of motivation. Some limitations of this study are that it was restricted to one population of students. Due to the nature of the survey, people may lie in some of the responses in order to obtain a more positive result. It is suggested that for future research in this area, broader populations with a range of demographics are necessary in order to establish a truly representative baseline group. Additionally, a clinical group diagnosed with alcohol-related disorders would give a far more effective view of an alcoholic population. These changes to the study should result in more accurate representation of the population in question, and therefore more accurate results. The practical considerations for the study are that it can be used to identify motivation levels in college-age students to gain a better understanding of what reasons they have to exercise. A study conducted by the Journal of Exercise, and Psych of Exercise and Psychology concluded that evaluating motivation levels is the best indicator for, for predicting activity levels in population. As exercise is now being put forward as an intervention tool to help combat increasing drinking rates, 
This study can help to identify how successfully to successfully create an exercise program to help initiate and maintain exercise based on their types of motivation. Therefore, by knowing what motivates people to exercise, an appropriate program can be implemented in order to achieve the best results. Uh, these are the references I used in my, uh, my study. And uh, thank you, that concludes my presentation.